Hey, it's Tyler here for bleepinjeep.com. Got a brand new flux core welder, but this is not for me. This is actually a birthday present from my folks to my brother, Aaron, who is a Bleepin' Jeep fan. So what's up, bro? Uh, you're not going to get to see this video till after your birthday, so this won't spoil the surprise. But uh, as my part of the birthday present, I am going to make a cover for this new welder and the stand so that this will stay nice as long as possible. So uh, I'll show you guys how to do that. Blackbirds by the thousands Fall down from the sky So back in my upholstery days, I made lots of covers for lots of things. Um, Swamp coolers, air conditioning units, boats, ATVs, cars, all kinds of stuff. I also, uh, quite often, people would bring in a cover that they had tried to make themselves that just ended up not fitting, and they would ask me to try to fix it or modify it so it would fit. And the, the number one mistake that I noticed that beginners generally make is they, they try to make the cover fit too tight. And what happens is, you either tear it trying to get it on and off or it's so frustrating when it when it fits that snugly that you just end up chucking it in a corner and you don't use it anyways because you just it drives you nuts trying to trying to put it on so let me show you the the allowances that I give when I'm when I'm making a cover for something <clears throat> so that it'll fit tightly enough to be effective as a cover but loosely enough that it's not going to drive you nuts to try and get it on and off the machine as part of this birthday present uh, my folks are giving, uh, giving my brother a stand to put this welder on and I want the cover to come down just below this inner tray so that when he puts his tools and stuff on this tray his kids don't mess with him. Rather than put the whole cart together and then have to take it back apart I've got the legs here and I can feel on the legs where the where the hole is the assembly hole for this tray and I've made that measurement and if I come down two feet that's going to get me down below this tray. So that is going to be my my height and that will be from basically this drop handle down 24 inches and that will get me down below where this tray is going to end up being. Now let's do our width and our length. <clears throat> Now I want this cover to fit a good inch. I want it to be finished inside dimension to be a good inch bigger than the item I'm trying to, to cover here. So the tray being the widest part is 18 inches. I want this to be at least 19 inches finished inside. I need a half inch seam allowance on each end so that's going to add a total of one inch to what I want my finished dimension to be so that's 20 inches. I'm going to cut this 20 inches when I sew it it'll end up being 19 inches on the inside and that will give me a full half inch clearance on both ends to be able to get it on and off. That should be sufficient enough to make this easy to get on and off. Width wise <clears throat> So it's 11 inches wide. I want it to be at 12 inches minimum finished width. Then I add an inch to that for my seam allowances, which means I cut at 13. So my cut size is going to be 13 by 20, and it'll be 24 inches tall. So let me go ahead and record those dimensions. I find that it's always a good idea to draw something out before you start cutting and hacking your fabric. It allows you to visualize it <clears throat> and decide if things are going to work or not. Basically, we're going to create a, a, a box, an open-ended box, like this, and we're going to be 24 inches deep. And we're going to be 12 inches wide. These are my these are my uh, finished dimensions, by the way. And we're going to be 19 inches 
along that way. Now, <clears throat> I need to decide how I want to run my seams. Do I want to run my seams in the ends? Do I want to run my seams in this end? Do I want to have one continuous piece wrap around this way? I think that's the way I want to do it. So if you can visualize this and, and understand there's a hundred different ways to do this. This is just the way I'm going to decide to do it today. I'm basically going to have one long continuous piece like this. And then I'm going to sew an end cap in both ends. I think that's going to be the most efficient way for me to use my material. Now as I'm making this I need to consider that there's going to be the torch lead's going to be coming out of this right here and he's not going to want to remove this every time he wants to put the cover on. So I need to accommodate or, or make some sort of, of a provision to wrap around this or go around this uh, this lead and figure out how, how I want to handle this. I think what I will do is, is cut a slit in the cover that will open up and go around this and then I'll have some sort of a, a fastener, either snaps or velcro or something else like that uh, so that this lead can come out go back in and sit on the tray and, and the cover can still come on and off without having to remove this. This is the material that I've chosen to use today. It's called Katex. It's a vinyl laminated canvas, really tough stuff, 18 ounce. This is similar to what your semi trucks running down the highway, they use this same type of canvas for their covers. Uh, it can be a little bit pricey but just really really durable stuff and absolutely completely waterproof. Um, Cordura, 1000 denier Cordura nylon, it's a pack cloth, is also a good choice. That stuff is more flexible than this and more abrasion resistant, but not as waterproof and not as resistant to sunlight. Uh, where this is going to be in a garage, this is overkill, but it's my brother, so I'm going to do him a bang up job. But you can use, uh, you know, use the thickest or heaviest material that your sewing machine can handle, would be my recommendation. If, if that's denim, use denim. You know, whatever, whatever your sewing machine will handle, I would, I would use. The other thing I like about this is I don't have to worry about raw edges fraying. <clears throat> this, I, can, I can cut this anywhere and the raw edge will never fray. Whereas with a cotton canvas or a, even a nylon, you, you're going to have to fold your edges under and sew them so that they don't fray with use. So this is going to be real convenient. It's going to be super durable. And it should look pretty good when we're done. All right, let's figure out how big each of these pieces need to be. So these are my finished dimensions. <clears throat> so I want 24 by 12, and then of course it'll be 24 on the back side. I want to have some material down on the bottom that I can fold under and stitch to give this a nice finished finished edge. So I'll add an inch to the bottom. So that'll make this 25. Uh, since this will not be a sewn seam, I don't need to add a seam allowance. So just 25 plus the 12 plus another 25. So that's 50, 62. So I'm going to have a 62 inch cut by... Now we want this to be 19 inches finished, but I do have to add for seams for this back panel and this front panel. So I'll add a, a half inch and a half inch which will make that 19 20 inches so we're gonna have a long skinny piece that we're gonna cut 62 inches by 20 inches and this is our cut size now let's figure out these two end pieces so here's how I've decided I want the final design to be. So the front of it is going to have a flap that will open up so that he can slide it down and the uh, torch lead will come right out of here. And then I'm going to put a pouch on this side that he can roll up the torch lead and just stick it in the pouch. So while it's got the cover on, stick the torch lead in there the, put the, and uh, 
and then snap this with with I don't know two or three snaps we'll see but I need to come down I made some measurements I need to come down and start this port right here eight inches from the top seam it needs to be two inches tall inch and a quarter wide and it's two inches in from center and whenever you're doing these it's always good to go from the center rather than from one of the sides and if you look right here when I cut this pattern out instead of just cutting a rectangle I will add this flap to it and then that will accommodate for this so we're end gonna end up with four pieces uh, the two ends the one main center piece and then this flap right here which is gonna be 16 by 14 give or take and then I'm gonna add two pieces of webbing in these seams right here that will make this cover much easier to get on and off and that should do it so let's lay out our our uh, pieces and cut them out blackbirds by the thousands fall down from the sky you taste the blood and feathers it helps you realize the things we thought were missing right here all this time yeah but get in the thing now, I always like to lay out all of my pieces before I do any cutting, and this is a good example of why. When I got this laid out, I realized that since my fabric is 61 and a half inches wide, if I was willing to, to shave a half inch off of that pattern and cut it 61 and a half instead of 62, I'm only going to lose a quarter inch of my overall depth on the cover, and that allowed me to set this up so that I got the entire pattern on less than one yard of fabric. Had I flipped it the other way, I would have had to have bought a minimum of two yards of fabric. So, always lay out your entire pattern before you start cutting, and, and be flexible. You know, I'm willing to give up a quarter inch of, of length in order to save myself the expense of buying a whole nother yard of fabric and having a bunch of waste left over. So I've got this all laid out. I'm gonna go ahead and, and start cutting this out and then we'll start sewing it up. Alright, let's start the sewing part of this with the pouch for the torch lead. Uh, I had to give up a little bit of size on this in order to get the material to fit within that one yard of fabric but it's still gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and trim these corners and show you how I'm gonna do this. I'm leaving a half inch seam allowance. Now normally this would be sewn shut like that and then that would create a solid corner. But where this is gonna be on a welder and there's gonna be all kinds of debris and grinding and crap like that, I wanna leave the bottom of this pouch these corners open so it's easier to that so this pouch doesn't just collect crap so I'm gonna cut a 45 degree all the way to to where that corner is and to where that corner is and then we are going to sew these down like that to give us a nice finished edge I'm using a DB92 bonded polyester thread. It's the same as a Tex90. It's a pretty good size thread. I wouldn't recommend going any smaller than that on canvas applications. This stuff's really stiff. It's cold in here. It's hard to work with this. <laughs> it's going to turn out good though. I'm going to attach this outer pouch to the main body before I sew the ends in because it's going to be much easier to sew and keep square if I do it now. So I've laid out a real faint here, but I've just laid out in pencil some guide marks. Alright, that 
should make a nice roomy pouch for him to stick his lead run, or lead wire, for the torch. Or whatever else he wants to put in there if he wants to put something else in there. Let's get the, the end sewn into this. I'm going to sew the back panel in first. I want to start at my center and work my way out going both directions. How's that for lining up? Just based off of measurements. <laughs> Sometimes you just get lucky. <coughs> Now's a real good time for a test fit. Let's go do that. Now, of course it would be better to do this on the actual stand, but my folks don't want to put the stand all together and then have to take it back apart to get it up there to where he lives. So, this will tell me what I need to know. Yeah, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? That looks good. Okay, let's sew the front in it. Put it on here for a final test fit and it looks like I'm gonna have to, I, I didn't think about this uh, ground wire right here so real easy fix though we'll just open up this notch a little bit so that it goes underneath and then we should be ready to put the snaps in so rim around the bottom and call it good I measured and then pre-punched these holes it just makes this go a lot easier I'm using brass mill spec snaps here with a uh, black oxide coating on them. This is a press and snap. <clears throat> they're ridiculously expensive. They're like over a hundred bucks, but they're the best thing in the world for doing snaps. Short of a floor mounted press, these are just awesome. Let's go see how it looks. I think we're done. Guess you really wouldn't even have to snap these down here if you didn't want to, but we'll snap them just for good measure. in the pocket. Yeah. That ought to keep the dust out of that machine, huh? That's it for this week. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope uh, that you'll give one of these a try. This is a really good first time sewing project. It's very forgiving. Just measure twice, cut once, be patient, and you should come out with a pretty good end result. You can go a lot simpler than I went here, too. So, Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Go check out bleepinjeep.com for all the best off-road uh, how-to videos on the internet. And I will see you guys next time. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Aaron, happy birthday to you. <laughs> sure love you, son. <laughs>